All right, I'm using a wide-angle lens for this, just trying it out. The trouble is I need to get so close to the ants that I, uh, kind of defeats the purpose in using a wide-angle lens. But that might be why you're, you're seeing things uh, a little differently than usual. Normally I have a traditional macro lens. Uh, it snowed last week, that's why there really wasn't a video on uh, ants. And uh, this week it's, um warmed up and all the snow is melted, but it's still about 45 degrees out, so that's why I am uh, just trying something new out here. This is the Formica colony, Formica pallidifolta, and they are kind of sluggish today. But let's see what else we can find. Now underneath this flower pot was a uh, colony of uh, Tetramorium, but they are so dependent on heat that they are back down on the earth again. Uh, looks like the pill bugs or wood lice have moved in, though. I'm sure the ants will make them move out as soon as they get uh, awoken again. I see some Tetramorium have come out. This colony is situated on a, underneath a rock in full sun. Now I see they're clinging to the rock, and not so much, uh... I don't see anyone over here, so they were just hugging the stone for uh, warmth. I'm gonna put them back now. Our first, uh, Ponera pensilvanica for the year. Kind of a shame I don't have uh, the other lens here, otherwise I'd zoom in a bit more. He's gone. <laughs> More Tetramorium keeping warm. Again, only the colonies that are out in the uh, underneath stones in full sun are actually out uh, basking. Now these ones seem to be living with uh, pill bugs, I see. Among the uh, roots of other types of grasses. This is a little surprising to see, um, what are these, Lassius uh, interjectus. They're uh, aphid farms. Try and get at a good angle here, without a shadow. Mmm, you can even smell the citronella there. So you can see what a wide-angle lens does, is it gives you more of a picture of what's going on. With an actual macro lens, the whole background here would just be a blur of color. With this, because we have something to focus on, you kind of get an idea of what's there and the environment that it's in. A macro shot, you might not notice, um, you can take a picture of a dragonfly with a blurry background that's just a wash of color, but you might never know that that was just someone's backyard. So, alright, that's... I think we've looked at these long enough. This is another Virginia bluebell I have in my yard. You can see the plants are actually, uh... have, uh, this year's, um, flowers sort of, uh clutched, protected from the uh, cold temperatures in their leaves. And these will get to be about a foot high or so before the flowers actually start to open. It's not really a plant that ants interact with, but it's one of the spring wildflowers I tend to like. Another reason that I grow Virginia bluebells is uh, they're a good combination with um, Certain other wildflowers that ants are uh, fond of, such as uh, woodland poppy. And this is just coming up right now. You have to be about two feet tall when it's done, and it will flower well before then. 
But you get the nice yellow flowers of the woodland poppy with the blue and pink of uh, the uh, Virginia bluebells. Yeah, it's just uh, something I like. Trilliums are a staple of a uh, ephemeral garden or a woodland garden for the American, uh, well, almost all over North America. Uh, their seeds are transported by ants, but in the absence of ants, they tend to just spill uh, their seeds wherever. A squirrel running along. So, right here by my finger, if I can make that visible. Yeah, so right here is a uh, actual trillium seedling that's coming up. I have to do this one-handed, but you can see around here various. Uh, well, this one's probably a bit older because it has leaves, but the adult plants, which uh, my camera is now almost leaning on, basically they spilled seeds out that were not distributed and they started to germinate right next to them. Uh, this clump here. See a single plant here. It probably, I probably just planted one of these and what happened is the root underground slowly divides. So you get these other flowering, uh, flowering uh, shoots that come up from the same plant and it slowly divides like that. So. You can have a clump that spreads slowly over a number of years. Among other plants. Or you can have seeds you know, walk away with the ants. It takes decades to uh, really accomplish anything good or you know any like a vast field of this stuff but eh, it's, it's worth it for me. There's a trillium that uh, actually opened up, but it's not going to flower this year. Trilliums are monofloral, so it's one flower per per shoot per plant. There's some argument as to whether how, how many uh, shoots count as a plant, because you are very easily able to divide the root underground, and they do eventually go their separate ways, different shoots. So I guess I'll end with this. This is a twin leaf which gets its name because the leaves, when they unfurl, are just, uh, well, they're, it's like a twin leaf. They're just uh, two, it's like two big elephant ears. But there in the middle is one of the most fleeting wildflowers in the North America. When it opens, it'll only last eight hours to two days, depending on what the weather's like. After that, you can just touch the thing or blow on it and all the petals fall right off. Not something I'd recommend growing for a beginner. <laughs> but anyway, this is one of the flowers that ants uh, disperse the seeds of. And it's one of the ones you really need to go out of your way because there's such a limited time to appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for watching.